What about third derivatives or fourth derivatives? These are not as easy to observe. You don't see them as prominently as you see things like velocity or acceleration, but they are hiding in certain corners. Let's take a look. Starting with the motion of a particle or a solid body. If we recall how that works, where you have an initial position, an initial velocity, an initial acceleration, then we had x of t, the position as a function of time, is x naught, initial position, plus v naught times t, initial velocity times time, plus 1 over 2 factorial, a naught times t squared, where that a naught is the initial acceleration. Okay, great, but there's more. What is the next term? It's related to a third derivative, but what is it called? You got position, velocity, acceleration. What comes after that? Jerk. Yes, that's right. It's called jerk. The jerk of a moving body is the third derivative of position with respect to time. What letter should we use for jerk? Yep, let's use J. It's the third derivative. Now, the next term in this series for position as a function of time, it's 1 over 3 factorial times the initial jerk, j naught times t cubed. Haha, -ha. well, there you go. But what follows that? What comes after jerk? Oh, dear viewer, I hate to say... In my defense, I did not come up with this. This is the physicist's fault. What comes after jerk is snap crackle and pop that's right so your next order term would be one over four factorial times initial snap times t to the fourth and we keep going and going now put aside for the moment the execrable terminology and think in terms of how this makes sense how the taylor expansion of that position with respect to time is picking up all of these derivatives we can move from the motion of a particle to more interesting and sophisticated mechanics, solid mechanics, fluid mechanics. Let's think, for example, of the notion of a thin film in fluids or lubrication theory. If you have a solid table and you drop a bunch of oil droplets on there, then they spread out and they form this thin film. That spread is determined by the third and fourth derivatives of the thickness, of the height. If you have a steady film of height h of x, then it satisfies the fourth derivative of height is minus 3 over the height cubed times the derivative of the height times the third derivative of the height. That is... That's kind of complicated, isn't it? And it's not so obvious how the third derivative and the first derivative and the fourth derivative are all sort of mingling together to determine the eventual shape of this thin film. But that's why lubrication, thin films, fluid dynamics, that's why those comprise more advanced courses. Now, you don't need to know anything about this equation, but it's a cool place where the third and fourth derivatives appear. Another instance in which the fourth derivative is especially prominent is elasticity. Let's say that we have a beam, and that beam is supported on the ends, and it maintains a load, a static load. There's some force pushing down it from above. But that force can be variable. It depends on the position along the beam. Well, the beam deflects, and the question is how and in what manner? One of the basic results in elasticity theory is that the fourth derivative of the deflection of this beam is proportional to its load. So if the deflection is u as a function of position along the beam x, then the fourth derivative of u with respect to x is equal to the load f of x divided by two constants, e and i, where e is the elasticity of the material that is used to comprise the beam, and I is related to the geometry of the beam's cross-section. 
in particular, it's the moment of inertia about a horizontal axis. But you don't need to know about that. These are just constants. And this is a really cool example of how a fourth derivative arises naturally in a phenomena that you can see all around you. You can see the deflection of a bridge under load from vehicles. You can see all these kinds of things. There's really a lot of interesting fourth derivatives going on in those settings. Now, all this stuff, beams and films and all these crazy equations, do you need to know all that? No. This is just for fun, just to give some physical examples of where these higher order derivatives show up in nature.